proponents of gridlock being a bad thing instead of a good thing. Well, Governor, when you and I were working in Sacramento together, you actually, I watched you use gridlock as the mechanism by which to get Democrats to compromise and Republicans to compromise, and both sides did things that they swore they would never do when they rose their hand and took their oath of office. You used gridlock in order to get major welfare reform, cuts in spending. You even used gridlock to get the very open primary on the ballot that we're discussing a part here today. Could you have done that without gridlock, and how did you get through it? Well, first of all, I, I, I believe also that you have to have sometimes gridlock, but it depends also how long. How long do you want to go on? I mean, what is going on in the United States right now, I mean, I think we had enough. Right. I mean, I think there's nothing getting done. Nothing. For years and years and years, you cannot point at anything that was accomplished in Washington, and we're spending two and a half billion dollars every year on the Capitol and all of those people that work there for nothing. And, you know, not immigration reform, not the really good health care reform. Uh, you know, the budget is in a shamble, one more debt is, is adding up. I mean, all this stuff, you know, energy policy and all this. I mean, where are we going? So I think it's enough of the gridlock. I cannot call that gridlock any more positive or constructive. Uh, I think we had temporary gridlock in California, and you're absolutely right. Uh, I mean, especially when it came to the budget. I mean, you can imagine a Republican governor and the Democratic legislature uh, I mean, you know, there was, we, we all of a sudden were in a recession in 2007, and they wanted to continue spending. So, of course, they wouldn't sign the budget. So there was, you know, a standoff, and they went on and dragged out until actually beginning of October when we finally signed the budget. But in return then, we got all kinds of concessions, uh, which was great. So we used the, 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 you know, the gridlock to our advantage, and the rainy day fund and, and all kinds of reforms. And uh, so... I think on the end, it is important to work together. And I have to just go back to what you guys said about hating. There was no one in Sacramento that I hated. I mean, these were all people that worked really hard, and they just had a different philosophy than I had. So it doesn't mean like, uh, you know, Speaker Nunez, he became a very good friend of mine. John Burton, the senator, became a very good friend and kind of a mentor to me because he was a terrific guy. He just was a liberal. Yes. So, so what? I mean, it's like, OK, so that's his belief. Mine was to be more conservative, and then we had to sit down and work it out. And we did the reform as, you know, with workers' compensation that saved the state now $150 billion, the businesses. So we worked things out and we worked on things together, even though he had a different belief. But it doesn't mean that I have to hate him. I looked at him and I said, this is a great guy. I want to hang out with this guy. He was funny. And uh, so oh, with, uh, with uh, Antonio here, I mean, he's a Democrat. I mean, we hung out together. We were going to barbecues. We were, uh, you know, having a good time. And, and, and uh, we were good friends. And he called me anytime when he needed something. And I called him when I needed something from him. Okay, but here's the problem.